documented experiences now becomes very crucial. And with that, I request Raj to take us through an AR. Yeah, thank you, Manja. Uh, and it's a pleasure to be on this panel. Thank you, NASCOM, for this uh, for the opportunity uh, to uh, to talk about uh, the technologies that we've got. And uh, I think it's great testimony from Mehul and uh, about the implementation and the confidence is something that I believe every manufacturer should have because the data backs it. And to have a great implementation partner like Microland is an asset because uh, they're razor sharp focused on industrial IoT. Uh, so let me get into the presentation, Manja. Uh, uh, I'm going to share my screen. You'll have to unshare. Yeah, I stopped sharing. All right. All right. Can you just see the information that everybody is able to see my screen? Yes, we can. Yeah. All right, great. So a lot of the industrial IoT concepts have been touched upon. Uh, and uh, PTC has been in the industrial IoT business along with ThingWorks for the past 11 years. So 2009 is when we started the journey. 2015 is when PTC acquired ThingWorks industrial IoT platform, and we've got a significant market share there. Uh, but the, my presentation today is going to focus around augmented reality, the other aspect of, of how you convert the digital back into the physical world or superimpose graphics in real life. Uh, and that's an area where we've got a, uh, a more than 70% market share in terms of our Euphoria uh, set of products. So I will be focusing this presentation only on uh, augmented reality and how AR and IoT can work together, which is essentially what you want because you want real-time information from the IoT platform to complement into the AR experience uh, and, and you know, superimpose the real-time graphics of a particular machine uh, that you see in the real space. Uh, and that's possible with both IoT and AR put together. Uh, and just, just for jargon and terminology correction, AR and VR are, are distinct technologies to an extent uh, at a certain level because virtual reality really cuts you off from the physical world. And it is something completely virtual, but augmented reality is about augmenting your physical world with graphics. Okay, uh, so let me go uh, take a couple of steps back into the behavior of of uh, of manufacturers and the industrial enterprise over years. Right, uh, we've had three major uh, roles that uh, were played by first the machines on the left side, uh, and then the humans on the right side, uh, and, the, and then the, with the advent of the computing power and cloud, uh, we have the, uh, the, the benefit of technology coming into the enterprise. The machines and all three are completely relevant even now uh, and in future as well, uh, equally pretty much. The machines have their advantages, which is the physical power, the consistency with which uh, they can go about doing things, resistance to harsh environments, and really being indefatigable, right? You, they'll never get tired and they can continue with doing those things. The humans are still very much relevant uh, in terms of the creativity and innovation. The sensory pattern recognition uh, uh, is unrivaled and something that even machine learning and deep learning will not catch up for uh, at least a couple of hundred years. Uh, and then the complex communication that, that we, are, uh, we are enabled to be doing as well as the sensory motor skills, how you sense something and take action immediately on something. Uh, so those advantages still remain and will continue to remain for a long time. And then of course, the, the cloud and the compute power, which is the digital advantages of calculating fast, of processing, of AI, of uh, you know, analytics that we talked about in terms of uh, you know, prescriptive analytics at the most highest level, where you see a failure and you give recommendations as to what to do to avoid that failure in future. Uh, and that's the ideal state. Uh, now I'll come to what the, uh, what the IoT industry has been doing. IoT is a concept which, is, which, is, uh, which has been around for 10, 15 years in concept at least, and has really caught on in the past four or five years. Uh, and the smart connected products were a, a concept of making the products 
uh, sense and act and uh, sense, uh, send data into the cloud. And you essentially wanted to create a digital twin so that you make a change on, on your screen and that change replicates onto the physical world. Uh, and then uh, you, you had uh, the augmented reality area uh, coming in, how IoT and work, AR can work together with the help of a wearable device or a handheld device, you could probably look at a product and understand its behavior in real time, right? Uh, and you know this is largely relevant in terms of training and servicing, uh, but also in operations and manufacturing, et cetera. Uh, how you would actually combine the two with, is with a, uh, the, the, the concept of computer vision. Right, which is the which is the ability for computers to see, uh, and that's uh, good technology that fuels augmented reality. Uh, and then, how would you then instruct and change things on the product? It is uh, by sending data to the cloud and getting data from the cloud about the real-time information about the product in question. Typically, large equipment is where. Uh, we see a lot of augmented reality experiences come in right now, but it can be applied almost anywhere. And what is the result of that? You will have smart connected people because now they have not just the analytics at their disposal, but also, uh, also uh, visuals at their disposal and power to learn faster. And, and therefore we complete the, uh, the optimization of both man and machine together which is smart connected products, which I talked about in the beginning, uh, smart connected humans on the right side, but also how do you optimize the processes, which in current times, uh, in COVID times is even more uh, relevant and necessary. Okay. So that pretty much completes the triangle and to make all of these uh, uh, optimized at its best is the ultimate goal of industrial IoT and augmented reality. What I'll do now is I'll show you a couple of, uh, a few, four videos, uh, and it has no audio, but it'll give you an idea of how to create an augmented reality experience, as well as what its practical benefits are. And then I'll move to the, uh, to the value uh, that you can derive out of it and what we hear customers saying about both industrial IoT and analytics. So I'll start with, uh, with this. You see the screen moving, everybody? Yes, Raj, I can. Yeah. Okay, what, what has been demonstrated here is how first to create an augmented reality experience. We did this for a large pump air and gas handling uh, uh, equipment uh, manufacturer called Howden. Uh, and uh, now an operator standing in front of the machine gets real time info and, uh, and alerts from that machine on what has gone wrong and he can actually place an order for a spare part and he's got graphics in front of him to show how exactly that spare part can be replaced. Uh, and, and that what he's wearing there is a micro, Microsoft HoloLens, but you can pretty much use any of the other wearables uh, to do this. Now the second that I'd like to show, and it is very, very relevant in the current uh, COVID times where, uh, where you ha you're having to work with only 30% of the uh, of the workforce on the shop floor and the remote, the expert uh, to guide maybe probably sitting at home or in a remote location. And in this kind of scenario, how do you use technology to bridge that gap? Uh, you see here, there is a technician who is, uh, who is in front of a large complex uh, equipment, but doesn't know exactly what to do, but there is an expert giving her guidance uh, on uh, with annotations on the screen uh, or, uh, as to what to turn, what to touch, what to press. Uh, and she's actually following that and uh, following those instructions. So this is a simplistic uh, demo of it, but you can have complex equipment instructions also captured uh, in doing this. And it's, uh, like I said, relevant in the current scenario. The other uh, area is about uh, how do you tackle the problem of uh, the skills gap? I think the skills gap was talked about earlier uh, by a couple of you. And how do you capture the knowledge that somebody's got in his head and, and train the people who are getting uh, you know, inducted into an organization? 
how do you enhance their training skills and uh, uh, how, how quickly can you train them is a big challenge that most HR departments have, but also uh, uh, the manufacturing organizations are thinking about. So in this video, you will see that there is a gentleman who spent 28 years in this company. Uh, he's got uh, a wealth of knowledge in his head, but uh, how do you effectively capture that into an augmented reality experience and then replay that and then transfer that to somebody who's getting trained? So I'll, I'll go to the first capture aspect right now. This gentleman wears the HoloLens and you know, he gives a step-by-step -step instruction, creates, uh, creates this whole graphic experience in front of him, gives uh, stepwise instructions on how to capture uh, the operations on how this needs to be managed, that complex equipment. Uh, and then, yeah, you, you see how on the left side of the screen, there's a stepwise uh, <coughs> kind of steps being shown here and uh, all of this is possible. So it's a lengthy procedure. It's typically used for complex equipment as well as complex procedures in setting up plants, for example, uh, where there's complex process. Now, a new trainee has come on board. How does she learn how to, how to, uh, how to, ma uh, how to manage that equipment? And that is done very fast. And with this technology, the learning ability uh, improves uh, and the training time improves by almost 50% uh, in organizations that have, um, uh, that have used this technology. And it gives her instructions on the left side of the screen, as you can see, and uh, it shows her what to remove, where to go, uh, which step to take, which direction to walk in, and exactly what to do in terms of uh, steps to complete the task. Right, so that's that's the third, and 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 like you must have seen there, um, you know, AR is is significant, and it's not just jazz with AR, which is the initial kind of resistance we saw from the market. But now, manufacturers are beginning to realize that there is actual uh, money benefits uh, behind it, uh, and there's cost benefits behind it. So if you invest in AR technology, it's really going to be useful, and it impacts various different aspects of an organization. Uh, I think there's substantial savings on training from the perspective of a CXO, uh, the learning department, the HR departments, et cetera. In engineering, it can actually be used to, uh, for people to collaborate who are uh, in different parts of the world in different, different cities uh, who cannot meet. And so that's extremely relevant at the moment. In sales and marketing, uh, it can be used to demonstrate a product, again, remotely as well, with graphics, uh, with the way that customers should use it, et cetera. In manufacturing, it can be used for envisioning a product before it is actually designed, before it's actually made. Uh, so uh, significant reductions on scrap and uh, inventory levels will go up within the organization. In customer operations, you can be told how to use a washing machine that you just bought uh, in the most optimal way. So paper manuals are a thing of the past and you can use uh, digital manuals to now take care of things. And on customer service side, when something is broken and something needs to be fixed, you can really do self-service or if it requires a technician to come and fix it, the technician knows in advance what's wrong with the machine so that it comes with a spare part to fix it itself. Uh, so that can be uh, a case of industrial IoT as well as uh, augmented reality working in tandem with each other. And this is what I was uh, really describing uh, in terms of how the various aspects of the organization can use augmented reality, a product demonstration for sales, manufacturing work instructions for assembly of complex equipment in front of you, operations of large complex equipment and expert assistance like you saw in one of those videos. Uh, where are customers actually using it across the value? So, so Raj, Raj if, you know, in the spirit of time, uh, possibly we can, uh, you may want to just uh, summarize it and then uh, open up your yeah, questions. I've just got, yeah, I've just got solved this seven, I think, and then maybe we should ask. I, I think also the screen is not visible to for most people, right? at least for me and some, a couple of others is very blurred. So that's the reason it may be better off to, for you to summarize it. Yeah, I've just got a couple of slides now. Okay, so there is... Uh, uh, these are the two major areas uh, where there is the maximum adoption in terms of augmented reality. 
And these are the benefits in those two areas in terms of the uh, unscheduled downtime uh, improving and uh, uh, safety and compliance like was described uh, by Amit right in the beginning. Uh, and in service, how you reduce the service strain costs, et cetera. And these are the customer references. It was, not, it was not clear. Can you just call out what were the two areas for adoption? The previous slide. Yeah, it's majorly manufacturing, 23%. Okay. 6% on service and support. Okay, thank you. Okay. And on manufacturing is mainly around unscheduled downtime, around lowering scrap and rework. Uh, fewer accidents and safety and compliance. And on the service side, it's about reducing the mean time to repair, increasing the attached rates and reducing training costs. Okay, and doing it, fixing it uh, first, fixing it right the first time. And these are the benefits that some customer, there are some customer testimonials here, a couple of them, but essentially I think you get the point of it. Uh, there, is, there is up to 50% you know, benefits in training cost uh, cost of uh, scrap is improved by 25% and downtime is improved by around the same. And one of the things we've done, and this is my last slide, one of the things that we've done uh, in, uh, in Northern Europe is to help Smith's Medical increase their ventilator uh, production uh, at the start of COVID. This happened around March when we uh, provided this technology uh, to them, contributed with this technology to ramp up production of ventilators we're thinking of doing something similar with uh, Tata uh, in the country as well. And that's in the works at the moment. So that's, that's pretty much all I wanted to touch upon. Thank you very much for listening. And if there are questions, I can take it. Great. Thanks. Right. And I think this was, this was very helpful.